Hey, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about tennis and golfer's elbow, and in particular, how you as a tennis player can manage and prevent the condition longer term. If you hang around to the end of the video, I'll show you a piece of kit that really helped me to manage my golfer's elbow back in my playing days. So, let's get into it. Welcome back. So if you've not been here before, my name is Ashley Neves and I run this YouTube channel, The Tennis Mentor, helping tennis players, tennis coaches and tennis parents to get more out of the sport. If you find this video useful or would like to see more of my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, before I get into my four tips, I must say that I'm not a doctor or a physiotherapist. However, I have suffered from golfer's elbow myself for a number of years. I've seen lots of doctors and physios and have figured out a few different ways that allow me to continue playing tennis pain-free without the need for lots of rest. It's been massively important for me as a tennis coach as I can't afford to be taking too much time off the tennis court. I would say that it's definitely worth consulting your doctor or physio with regards to advice on how you manage it for yourself. But these four tips certainly work for me and I hope they work for you too. So if you're watching this video, you may already have tennis or golfer's elbow or you may be watching this as you want to find ways to prevent the injuries. So first of all, it's important to understand what tennis and golfer's elbow are and in basic form, they are overuse injuries which cause inflammation of the tendons around the elbow at the top of the forearm. Now golfer's elbow is actually on the inside of the elbow here. This is the one that I've suffered from in the past and tennis elbow is on the outside of the elbow here. Anybody can develop these overuse injuries. You don't have to be a tennis player or a golfer. However, they're more common in these sports due to the repetitive nature of hitting balls. You can find a lot of good advice online as to how you can treat tennis and golfer's elbow, how you can manage it and prevent it. But lots of this advice comes back to rest. Of course, rest is going to help to reduce the inflammation and in turn reduce the pain. However, I can't afford to spend too much time away from the tennis courts as it's how I earn my living. So I had to find some ways to manage the inflammation whilst being able to still play on the tennis court. Saying that, it is super important to listen to your body and if you are in pain, rest is going to be the best way to cure it. Other things like ice can be good to reduce inflammation and also taking anti-inflammatories can help too. However, if the pain is manageable and you want to continue with your tennis, then these following tips should definitely help you. So the first way that you can help to manage the condition is to make sure that you're using the right equipment. Lots of tennis players take this for granted, but it's super important in making sure that you're not putting your body under too much stress. I've broken the equipment down into four parts. The first is your tennis racket. It's really important that your tennis racket is the right weight and the right balance for you. Now, I can't give you specifics on what weight you should be using, so it's definitely worth speaking to your local racket specialist and trying a few out. Using a racket that's too heavy for you is gonna put unnecessary stress on your arm. However, on the flip side of this, if you use a racket that's too light for you, you're gonna feel a bigger impact of the tennis ball on the strings, which is not gonna be nice for your elbow. So getting the weight of the racket right is crucial. Once you know what weight of racket you should be using, the next thing to think about is the grip size, and this is vital for helping tennis and golfer's elbow. Using a grip size that's either too big or too small is gonna force you to hold the grip tighter, which is definitely something we want to avoid. A very simple way of checking your grip size is by holding your tennis racket with the Eastern forehand grip, which is with your index knuckle on the flat edge on the side of the racket. And on this side of the racket, you can see that there's a gap between my fingers and my thumb. You should be able to fit your index finger in that gap. If there's a big space between your index finger and your thumb, then that shows that your grip's too big. And if you can't fit your index finger in that gap, then your grip's too small. But again, speaking to your local racket specialist, they'll be able to help you with getting the right grip size. If your racket's already the right weight and balance, but your grip size is too small, you can build the grip size up, but it's very difficult to take the grip size down smaller. So if your grip size is too big, it's worth considering getting a racket with a smaller grip size. The next thing you need to think about with regards to equipment is your strings. Now, two things to consider with your strings is the string type and the string tension. Generally, if you do suffer from tennis or golfer's elbow, having a softer string in your racket or a more comfortable string in your racket can help to relieve the pain and to prevent flare-ups. 
I like to use a multi-filament in my racket, especially for coaching. As well as the string type, you need to consider the string tension. It's worth considering having a slightly looser tension in your strings. That can feel slightly more comfortable and create less stress on your elbow. For reference in my tennis, when I'm coaching and I'm feeding a lot of balls throughout the whole day, I tend to use my lighter racket. So this racket here is the Headspeed Pro. I use this for competing. However, when I'm coaching and I'm hitting lots and lots of balls over a long period of time, I will use the MP version, which is slightly more forgiving, it's slightly lighter, and I'll also have it strung up with a slightly looser tension with a softer string. That could help me as a tennis coach to manage my golfer's elbow. The final thing that you need to think about with regards to equipment is the type of tennis balls you're using. In my opinion, if you have golfers or tennis elbow, you want to try to stay away from a pressureless tennis ball. They tend to be a lot harder and slightly heavier than the pressurized balls. I've been using the Head Pro ball and that seems to work really well for me. However, in my slinger bag, I use pressureless tennis balls as they last a lot longer and I do start to feel it on my elbow. So if you do have golfers or tennis elbow, it's definitely worth staying away from pressureless tennis balls and using a standard pressurized ball. What you don't want to be doing though is playing with really soft tennis balls as you're gonna to have to do a lot more work to get power so make sure you replace your balls fairly regularly and find one that's comfortable for you now that you've thought about equipment I'm sure there's gonna be a couple of things that you can change instantly with your own racket take a look at your racket see if you need to consider trying out some different ones if the racket's fine or you want to look for a cheaper option have a think about your grip size and your strings and your tennis balls and if you can get all of those things right you're on track to playing tennis with a lot less pain. My second tip is making sure that you warm up and cool down properly. Now it sounds obvious, but there's a couple of different ways that you can do this for your tennis and golfer's elbow in particular. I tend to find when it's cold weather in the winter conditions, the flare ups tend to be a little bit worse. So I make sure that I spend even more time warming up in those conditions. But alongside my dynamic warm up, my physical warm up, I do self massage. You can do this for golfers or tennis elbow and it's very simple. You just need to warm up the muscle and the tendons by applying a bit of pressure with your thumb. Now, there are videos out there showing you more complex and more advanced ways of self-massage for golfers and tennis elbow, but I tend to find that just rubbing where the pain is, is a good way of warming up the muscles and preparing them for action. If you massage your forearm too, any release of tension in your forearm and around your elbow where the pain is, is gonna help your muscles to relax and to help you to perform better with less pain. That's what I would consider doing before play, along with a few stretches. However, after play, it's really important to stretch out. And a couple of very simple stretches can help to prevent further inflammation and to improve your mobility and help to aid recovery. So for tennis elbow, a very simple one is to hold your arm out straight and pull in this direction your palm. You should feel a stretch down the top of your forearm here. So you want to hold that for a good 20 to 30 seconds. And then on the opposite of this, pulling backwards. So you'll feel more of a stretch under here which is a good one for golfer's elbow. I'd suggest doing both of these regardless of which one you suffer from, or even if you don't suffer from them, it's good to have mobility, flexibility in your forearm to prevent the injuries. I would do that after every training session. It's a really good way to prevent further flare-ups. My third tip is to take a look at your technique. Now poor technique or poor form can be a cause for tennis and golfer's elbow. If your technique or your biomechanics are inefficient, then you could potentially be doing a lot more than you need to be doing with your racket. If you've already got a tennis coach, I'm sure they're already helping you to make your technique more efficient, which will hopefully longer term help you to manage and prevent injuries. If you don't have a tennis coach, there are ways that you can have people look at your technique and give you feedback. I actually provide video analysis and you can send me videos through the link I'll put in the description below. So if you've got a forehand or backhand or a serve that you want me to look at, you you can send it through and I can send you my video feedback. But to save you some money, I've got three simple tips that you can put into action straight away. Number one, we've mentioned it before, it's relaxing your grip. So the worst thing that you can do for tennis and golfer's elbow is to grip the racket really, really tightly. 
is gonna cause unnecessary stress to your elbow. So when playing, try to think about loosening up your grip on all of your strokes. If you're worried about dropping your racket, then it's worth considering getting a new grip for your racket. Using a nice tacky grip can help you to feel more confident that you've got hold of the racket without you having to grip it really, really tightly. As well as helping you with injuries, having a nice loose grip will also help you to develop power, so it's a win-win. The second thing that you need to consider when playing is make sure that you're meeting the ball out in front of your body, whether you're hitting a serve, a forehand, a backhand, a volley. When you meet the ball in front of your body, you're in a much more stable position. Anytime you make contact with the ball next to your body or behind you, you're putting unnecessary stress on your elbow. So try to meet the ball out in front of you, it's gonna be far more comfortable. The final thing to consider technically is to have longer swings. If your swings are very short and blocky, then again, it's gonna add stress to your elbow. By having long swings, they can be a lot more fluid and the racket will be doing more of the work, which is what it's designed to do, as opposed to your arm and your elbow. Have a go at some of those things next time you're on court and hopefully it will help to ease some of the stress and inflammation on your elbow. So we're on to tip number four, my final tip. And this tip is more about longer term injury prevention as opposed to managing golfers and tennis elbow. This tip should be done once the pain is at a much more manageable level and it's building strength in your forearm and your wrist. Now, if you can build up your muscles in your forearm, it's going to make for a much more robust elbow. It's going to be able to withstand much more impact on the tennis court. I wouldn't suggest building up your strength while you're in pain. Like I said before, rest is gonna be the best cure for pain. However, if the pain is eased, then building your strength is definitely going to help longer term at preventing flare-ups. So general weight training, it could be body weight training, it could be resistance band training, is great for building up your forearm and wrists. And there are lots of exercises that you can find on YouTube that can help with your forearm strength. Using a resistance band, it could be as simple as pulling up like so, or the other way around, this way, using a light dumbbell, all of these sorts of things. But as promised, right at the start, there was one piece of kit that I got when I was about 16, 17 years old, and it helped me massively. It's called a power ball. So it's a gyroscopic ball. You'll see in here, it's got a ball that spins inside of a shell. And what you do is you've got a piece of string, a bit like a shoelace, and you pop it in like so, and you wrap it around like this. And then you give the string a big pull and the ball inside is spinning. Now, once the ball is spinning, your job is to rotate your wrist in a circular motion. And you'll start to hear the gyroscopic ball speeding up. Can you hear that? Now, the faster, it's really turning fast now, and I don't know if you see, but it's working all of my forearm muscles and my wrist. Now, the faster you turn it, the heavier or the more resistance the ball puts through your arm. And it's a really good way of building up your grip, your wrist strength, and more importantly for us, our forearm strength. Now, you don't need to do it for too long. It's already starting to burn. I can feel it working. But that, for me, has been a game changer in my golfer's elbow. Um, like I said, I would never do it when I'm in pain. You know, make sure that you do the other three tips first to make sure that you're managing the pain and reducing the inflammation. And once you're at a stage where the pain has gone, then it's worth considering building up strength. I think this was about 20 pounds, um, but for me, it's a tool that I keep in my bag at all times really good one for tennis and golfers elbow so check that out i'll put a link in my description below so there you go they were my four tips for managing tennis and golfers elbow i'm sure if you've got tennis or golfers elbow you've tried some of these before but if you if you're still suffering from pain i hope that there's some things in this video that will really help you as i said i'm not a doctor or a physio so it's important that you consult yours and do rest if you're suffering 
Let me know below if there's anything in this video that you've learned that's new to you and let me know if you've tried any of these before and how they've worked for you. If you don't suffer from tennis or golfer's elbow but you're a tennis player looking to avoid it then definitely work on building up your forearm strength. This is a good way to do it. You can use Dynabands, dumbbells, any kind of weight training on your arms will help. Make sure you're using the right equipment, make sure you stretch, make sure you warm up and all of these things should help you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck in your recovery. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.